The only problems are the pests. You see, most places have mice or mosquitoes. We have dragons. Train Your Dragon is considered one of the most successful animated movies ever. The film was loosely based on the 2003 book by Cressida Cowell, and it's one of those adaptations that was done perfectly. I enjoyed the book on its own, or in its own way, but when I watched the movie for the first time, it didn't take away from what I saw in the book. It actually made it better, or should I say, it translated perfectly for the medium. And so How to Train Your Dragon was adapted to CGI animated film produced by DreamWorks and distributed by Paramount Pictures. The movie, which was set around a mythical Viking village called Burke. The story worked so well, not just because they were dragons, but because it had the right amount of comedy, seriousness, and relatability concerning the main character and the life that he had. Not to mention, as the franchise continued and we got other movies, we got to see Hiccup, the main character, who was an underdog, grow up and learn to accept loss, try to make things better for his village, and become a man. There's so many things I can get into when it comes to what makes How to Train Your Dragon great. The main purpose of me even saying all this is because the movie did everything perfectly. The story was completed, and even though we got spin-offs, the main film arc gave us a beginning, growth and development of the characters, specifically that of Toothless and Hiccup, obstacles that they both had to overcome, the parallel of them coming into their own as they reached adulthood, overcoming more obstacles, and then passing on their genes to make a new generation and to make things different by bridging the gap between dragons and humans. That's it! Nothing else was required! So, when a few people in some ties that are so tight around their neck that it makes their heads swell up three times the size of their normal girth, look at that, they decide, you know what would be great? Please, tell me. Let's, let's do that, but this time, let's make it live action because we see how well that usually works out, especially in the last few years. So instead of giving us a whole new dragon movie or franchise, let's just, just take some real people and some piss poor CGI to mix it in and basically just tell the same story over, but like not really, and change all the characters to the point where it doesn't even feel like the same story and then slap the How to Train Your Dragon title into it so that you can bring the fans of the franchise that won't even recognize whatever the hell this is that we just made. Now Universal and Disney are two different things and so far Disney has been, um, you know, going through some kind of middle-aged crisis when it comes to stupid remake live action thing. And at this stage, it seems as though everybody else is doing better, which isn't really saying much. One thing to take away from this is that Dean de Blow? De Blois. De Bleu. De, de Bluis? De Blue. De Bleu. The blue, the blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. Dean Deploy is supposed to be writing and directing it. And at the time of this video, we weren't really sure whether or not it was going to be a continuation of the story or literally a remake where they just are retelling the same story over again, but with like real people. Regardless of all of that, a lot of people are saying this is a bad idea and they're all asking one question above all. Why? Why is this needed aside from the fact that the studio just wants more money without needing any passion or extra work to come up with something else new? Some people might not mind and then there are people like me that are just sitting here wondering what the hell. It's not that I'm totally against it, but I'm also the camp of if they can do one of these Del Toro type situations like Del Toro did with Pinocchio with the story and tell it in a slightly different way than I guess, but it's not something that makes me particularly excited. And that's because I got everything and more that I needed and wanted from the actual franchise. I might also lean into the camp of it being a bad idea or just a useless idea, and here's why. Live action remakes are a shell of their former glory. Telling us a story that was originally a 2D animation or a 3D animation and then just taking the same story and slapping a realistic skin on it only hurts the way the story was originally intended to be told. Live action remakes often fail to capture the magic and the charm of the original animated film. Animated films have a unique visual style and animation that can be difficult to replicate in live action. One of the biggest abominations of this that proves my point was the remake of The Lion King, where the lions were CGI but made to look real but you could tell they were CGI and just completely void of expression and emotion. Sure, cats have emotion, but if we're anthropomorphizing creatures so that they can be more relatable, having them all have this freaking look on their face, like regular lions and cats, doesn't really do much. At that point, it would have been better to just make a real life documentary based on the Lion King story. Just look at how they're talking here. Look at how their faces are moving. They look almost exactly the same. There is no room for emotion when you're trying to ground it completely in reality, which is again jarring because yet they make their lips move 
to speak. The fact that we have talking lions, which is definitely not a real thing, should have given more leeway for them to make the lions more expressive, but they didn't do that. Now take a look at the same pair in the original animated film, The Lion King. Every emotion, every expression is told that even though you don't know what they're saying, you can tell what they're feeling based on their emotion. Something that live action or CGI live action could never portray. It is clear here that Nala is either pissed at him or disappointed. It is clear here that Simba has not one fuck to give and Nala is just flabbergasted by his behavior. But without hearing what they're saying, it's almost impossible to tell what Nala is feeling and what Simba is feeling. Because even though they're grounded in reality based on how they're making them move and look, they don't have enough foresight to at least make the ears on the cats go backwards or twiddle enough so that we can get the expression that way. Not to mention, most of the people or the general audience, for which I guess these remakes are for, cannot understand the body language of a freaking lion or most cats. Which is why people end up having things happen to them like this. It bit me. Oh my god, it bit me. Well, no shit. You stupid bitch. Live action remakes often fail to capture the magic and the charm of the original film. Animated films have a unique visual style and animation that can be difficult to replicate in live action. This can result in a final product that looks inferior to the original and fails to capture the same sense of wonder and imagination. But let's face it, if you give something the exact same title and you label it as a remake, people are always going to be comparing it to the original. Those people are always going to be drawing those comparisons no matter what you try to say. And they're going to be wondering what it is that you're adding to the live action that they couldn't have already just gotten from the original film. It's not like How to Train Your Dragon is an ancient film. I've watched it several times over the past years and and honestly, to me, it looks as though it has held up pretty well. And at this point, you can't even bait people into nostalgia because we could just re-watch the original movies. They held up so well that you can even see they're still considered new. The How to Train Your Dragon original animated film and its sequels have already been very successful and have a dedicated fan base. The live action remake could potentially disappoint fans who have grown attached to the animated versions of the characters and the story. I mean, what, are they gonna take some little boy that looks nothing like Hiccup and acts nothing like him or seems to be only pretending to be him and trying to convince us that's who he is? When many people who have watched the movies actually got to live with the character, grow up with him, watch him grow up and have his own children? Why on earth do we want to see it done over again so soon? soon with someone that probably will look nothing like him. Another reason live action How to Train Your Dragon movie would be seen as redundant and really unnecessary is the animated film already perfectly captured the fantastical world and creatures of the story. It indeed will be difficult to replicate the same level of visual magic in live action. Additionally, the animated film had a lot of heart and emotion that would be hard to replicate in live action. Can it be done? Of course, but that level of devotion and commitment and passion will require them to value expand the world and put everything they've got into giving us more than they've already given in the original franchise and at that point why are we even making live action? The humor and the charm that works so well in the animated film is not going to translate well in a live action human being. It also is going to look very weird a human trying to react with a CGI creature. The two of them being from completely different worlds and dimensions or whatever you want to call it and have the same level of body movements and expressions that the animated characters have. The animated How to Train Your Dragon films had this unique stylized animation that added to its personality and appeal. In live action, it may be difficult to replicate that same sense of humor and charm as I was saying. And on top of that, you risk pissing off people by changing certain elements of the original story, which can be disappointing to the fans. Given how cherished the original tale is for its distinctive and expertly produced story, this could be especially problematic for a How to Train Your Dragon live action remake. I mean, like most of them do, to some degree, the live action remake will or might have to alter plot points that are crucial to the story's appeal, which would be detrimental to the entire experience. When you're labeling something as a remake or you dare to use the same title, that's exactly what you're doing, or you're asking people to believe you're doing, that you're making a remake, that you're retelling the same story. You're asking them to come in with a preconceived notion that this is going to be exactly the same tale that they've seen before that they know and love, but it's just going to look more real, or it more or less is going to follow the same story. Sometimes there are some stories that work better in specific styles, like anime. An example of this is Yusugura Sora. The anime captured the emotions of the characters perfectly via their voices, the actions and illustrations and music that fit for the animation. 
and the slow pans, the places where they hang so we can feel the tension of what the characters are feeling. And that's all a perfect fit for that specific type of animation. That would not work if it had been live action. If someone had made that into a live action movie, honestly, it would just have become a completely different movie altogether. What made it impactful as an anime or for the type of story was the medium in which it told the story. And that's why movies like Coraline work for the style that they have. The creepiness of the stop animation and the way that these things look when they move is what drives home the entire atmosphere and experience. As for works like How to Train Your Dragon, often the original movie has very strong animation and VFX, which is hard to replicate in live action. It's also going to be more costly in some cases and time consuming to make the movie look as good as the original or better. A live action movie also runs the risk of looking unrealistic or cheesy if it's done poorly. In the originals, whether it be 2D or 3D, all the characters fit within the same world already. But if it's going to be a live action remake, and when we say live action, we truly mean like live action. We're not talking about whatever the hell this was. This is not live action. This is literally all CGI. We're talking about mixing real life elements like human people, CGI dragons, and then what is that gonna look like? Unless they're just remaking it into a CGI movie again, it's gonna look weird because there's certain limitations to expressions that real humans can make and the way their body can move. And the same is said if you have to complement that by using dragons that look way more realistic because you have real humans in a live action remake. If they wanna take a challenge and make it something with Daenerys Targaryen her dragons and make it a more serious thing, I guess. But again, at that point, why not just make a completely new movie? something like this for real. There just seem to be too many things that can fail and honestly, if I'm being totally honest, it's been a little bit too soon. Since How to Train Your Dragon can kind of still hold up, it makes no sense to remake a movie about it just for the sake of doing that. Remakes are only good if the movies came out from ancient days like 1970s or even movies from before that point or even in the 1990s. How to Train Your Dragon ended with Hidden World in only 2019. At the time of this video, video that was four years ago. Four years. It was four years. In only four years? Excuse my vulgarness, but then why are the fuck are we doing a remake? My final point is what most people think, and it's because we've had a track record of this happening, especially in the past few years. Live action remakes, particularly in our time, are seen as cash grabs, and studios may not put the same level of care and attention into the production as they would with the original film or as they did with the original film. This could result in a lower quality of the final product. If they were making something like a parody of the original, then I can kind of understand. If they were making How to Train Your Dragon but a horror themed one, or what it would be like if dragons were really attacking the island of Burke, then I can understand. Something like Reign of Fire. <laughs> Like Dragonheart, the first movie. Me for sport, and when there are no more dragons to slay, how will you make a living, knight? Shut up! <laughs> yes, I know. Kinda dated this thing. You can't blame me, I was obsessed with dragons and I found every dragon movie I could when I fell in love with dragons and binged them. Hey, it's a guy from Jurassic Park. But if they're doing this just as a means to avoid risk and avoid putting any passion or work into making something new or adding to something that is already perfect, it really does seem as a likely reason that this is being done is solely for just making money alone. And you know it's a huge reason why people make movies, but originally it came from somebody's heart and passion to make stories or to tell a tale and people loved it because of that passion and that artistic experience expression that came from within that person to want to express that. Then they saw how fans liked something that someone clearly put their passion and love into, and that's when the money comes in. The money dries up and the franchises are destroyed when they try to go into it solely for making money and the passion is missing. I'm glad that the main How to Train Your Dragon franchise is over because no matter what they do next, good or bad, they will never ruin the adventure that we had with Hiccup Haddock and his Night Fury Toothless. In my mind, and always, they went their separate ways and reunited 
and then they showed each other their offspring and they grew up and each got the girl, the girl got the guy. They both had become strong males in their family with strong females by their side and amazing children that would pass on that legacy. Oh my God, just seeing the scene of the ending just brings tears to my eyes because it was so raw and real. Because after not having seen Hiccup for a long time, you can see in Toothless's expression with his big animated eyes, he didn't recognize Hiccup. Then when he does, there's a look of realization on his face that usually is only shown best in animation. Dare I say it, but animated works can do a lot of things in a more showy and stylized manner than even the human face can. But you never know, right? Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.